The Xbox 360. Everyone's favorite Xbox console made to date with many memorable games such as Halo 3 and Modern Warfare 3. Nowadays, there has never been a better time to own an Xbox 360. Let's get started. We'll begin with taking a quick look at the different 360 models, just so you know what you're getting for each console. The first 360 was launched back in 2005, offering two different models, the Core and the Pro. Compared to the Core, the Pro had a 20GB hard drive. Both consoles lacked an HDMI port and just came with an AV cable. Also, these consoles used to get Red Ring of Death, and I actually have one that got Red Ring of Death, and I'll show it in a bit. Later on we have the Xbox 360 Arcade and Elite that launched in 2007. Both came with a wireless controller, an HDMI port, and the Elite has a massive 120 or 250GB storage options, compared to the Arcade's 256 or 512MB of storage. Yeah, megabytes. Then in 2010, the model that I own launched with 4GB of onboard memory, as well as 250 or 320GB options. This console also came with inbuilt Wi-Fi, as well as these consoles are not likely to get Red Ring of Death. Lastly, Microsoft launched the 360e, which has 4GB of onboard memory or a 250GB hard drive option. The Xbox 360e is basically a restyled 360s with design trails of the Xbox One. And remember to be aware of the Red Ring of Death, which was a common motherboard failure, especially on older models. This could indicate that the console is dead. Here we have the Xbox 360s in matte black, with 4GB of onboard memory. I got it for around 50 bucks, and that also includes 11 of these games. the regular black controller as well as the Kinect. Even though the console has a matte finish, it still gets visible scratches. The Xbox 360S or E is probably the best 360 consoles that you should be looking for as of right now. This is because 1. You can find them for about the same price as an older 360. 2. They are much quieter due to the slim having one larger fan rather than two smaller ones found in the older models. Three, they have newer motherboards that draw less power and are much less likely to get Red Ring of Death. And four, they have built-in Wi-Fi, so you don't have to use an Ethernet cable. And of course, if you'd want to find an older dashboard, such as the Blades dashboard, then you'll have to find an old 360 that hasn't gotten the Red Ring of Death. If you like the feel of an Xbox One or even an Xbox Series X or S controller, then you'll most likely be satisfied with the 360 controller. The design isn't much different compared to today's Xbox controllers. It feels very good in the hand and honestly, there isn't much to complain about. But there is just one minor problem that many people have complained about, and that is the D-pad being hard to press in the right direction. Microsoft listened and luckily, they fixed it with their rotating D-pad controller. This controller has a more accurate D-pad, and with a rotation on the D-pad, you can get back to the regular D-pad if you'd like. This controller also have new thumbsticks that look just like the Xbox One and later controllers, which I like, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have a quick listen to these buttons. Now what would the 360 be without its games? The 360's library contains of many great titles, and the best part is that you can find tons of great games for literally as little as one single dollar. For instance, look at this auction I won the other day, Forza Motorsport 3 for only 29 cents. This recently made me more interested in collecting and playing Xbox 360 games. And despite the age of the console, my 360S still performs well. While driving fast in Need for Speed Shift, I could notice some FPS drops here and there, but I'm happy to say that it wasn't ruining the experience. The game also looks great for being the 360 itself, and we'll try to push the console to its limits after playing some good old Black Ops 2.
Ah, the memories. Anyways, here we are in Black Ops 2 Zombies, and it just felt that the controller was made for the game. It's running smoothly and I have no complaints. Well, if we're talking skill, then I have complaints. I also want to mention that there are many Call of Duty games available on the Xbox 360, such as Modern Warfare 1, 2 and 3, Black Ops 1, 2 and 3 and World at War. Now we'll be trying out GTA 5 to push the limits of the console. This is the most graphic intense 360 game that I own, and to play this game I run it on a USB stick because my console only have 4GB of onboard memory and it isn't enough to play GTA 5. When free roaming in GTA I could instantly notice a lower FPS, it was also very clear when the FPS was dropping below 30. Now GTA 5 isn't most likely something you're going to play on the 360 anyways since the online servers are dead and the story mode still exists on newer generations. Anyways, some other graphic intensive games such as Forza Motorsport 4 and Alan Wake are games that both look great and run great on the Xbox 360. Some games require the Kinect to be played, and even if this piece of hardware is more than 12 years old, it holds up surprisingly well. Sure, it isn't perfect, but it still delivers a smooth experience that is still enjoyable today. The Kinect is great when playing alone or with up to 4 people. Games made for the Kinect vary from regular 360 games, and if you like to try something new rather than just casual gaming, or if you enjoy Wii games, then the Kinect is worth picking up as you can find it cheap these days. The games made for the Kinect are ok, with around 120 games available. If you're considering getting a Kinect, then Kinect Sports and Kinect Adventures are worthy pickups. Please note that every 360 model supports the Kinect, but the 360S and E have a special port built in into the consoles, which makes the consoles and camera work seamlessly. So, if you like a nostalgia trip and relive some amazing classics that still hold up strong, then the Xbox 360 is definitely worth buying as of right now. If you enjoyed this video, I've also made a similar video about the PS3 here on the left, and if you like tech, you may want to check out the playlist on the right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.